Would you be the jerk for buying an extra seat because of your weight and then refusing to give up said extra seat for somebody else's toddler? We'll get into that in a bit, but first, am I the jerk for not paying for the wedding despite promising that I will? One of my sons, Kai, 21-year-old male, is gay. He's not officially out, but everyone knows he is gay. It's just so obvious. He also has a boyfriend that he claims is just a friend, but we know the truth. Last night, all of the kids were visiting. We decided to order dinner and my daughter, 17, was responsible for ordering food for everyone. I guess she thought it would be funny to order burgers for everyone, but order a hot dog for Kai. She told him that, I figured you'd like this better. You know, teasing him like siblings do. One of my other sons has a fiance, Nora, 29. After my daughter said that to Kai, Nora made a face as if she was disgusted by the thought of my son being gay and told my daughter, don't joke about that, it's not funny. This hasn't been the first time that Nora has said something like this about Kai. She is a firm believer that Kai is straight. She is religious, so I don't think I need to explain how she feels about gay people. Here's where I might be a jerk. Years ago, I promised my son, Nora's fiance, that I'll pay for their wedding, but I don't want to do it. I have a gay son and I don't want someone who is against it to be part of our family, so I told him that I've changed my mind and won't be paying. As a matter of fact, if she ever says something that slightly offends Kai, I won't even attend their wedding. They think I'm a jerk and I'm overreacting. I mean, I guess there's a number of factors that go into this, like what kind of promise did OP make years ago? And is OP sure that what's going on here is coming from a place of homophobia? Ultimately, I don't think OP's the jerk. I think you might stand to upset them, especially if you made some kind of promise to them, but it's your money to do with as you wish. Also, hi, I'm Steven, and if you guys enjoy getting to decide whether or not all of these people are jerks, why not hit those like and subscribe buttons down below? That said, our next story is, am I the jerk for demanding apology from carer slash husband for not feeding me properly after major surgery? Last night I sent a text to my husband saying, freak you if you can't apologize. Now he won't talk to me. Background, I've been the main cook for this family for 17 years. I'm 40 years old. We have five kids. He's nearly 50 years old and he rarely cooks, but he is capable of cooking. Seven years ago, I had a total hip replacement planned. I'm on crutches and a lot of pain meds. He's my carer. Yesterday, 7 p.m., he said he would start cooking dinner. I was concerned and starving and I asked him what dinner was. He said he was defrosting frozen chicken breast for a Hello Fresh meal. To set the scene, the lunch he served was half of a small plate of broccoli and sweet potato, no protein. Breakfast was a banana and a cuppa. I had to ask for one slice toast. So by 7 p.m., I was starving, helpless, and in pain. When he said frozen chicken, I yelled, I know there's food in the fridge, please just bring me something. Plan B was microwave lasagna leftovers, which a neighbor delivered the day before, which he cooked, i.e. threw in the oven. Lacking protein, I started yelling again. I can't believe you can't find something proper. 17 years and I can't even trust you to feed me? Edit, lasagna is Woolworth's brand basic lasagna, not homemade. Neighbor was very kind to deliver it, but not high in protein. He got mad saying, don't you want food? I'm offering chicken or lasagna with salad. What more do you want? How are you mad? I'm offering you a choice. I felt betrayed, disappointed, and unloved, but I needed to eat, so I told him lasagna. He served it, I eat, and I go to bed. After 30 minutes, I'm still mad, so I texted him. I didn't think I would have to spell it out. Feeding a person is not difficult. Your plan of defrosting frozen chicken at 7 p.m. is freaking ridiculous. Please have a nutritious meal for me tomorrow. The trust I had for you has been going for a while now, but this is a huge low. And for you to try to throw a fit and try to make me look like the crazy one, freak you if you can't apologize. Edit, yes, I realize how awful this was, but I'm mad and I wanted real feedback. So, being honest, I usually don't speak like this, but yes, the resentment is growing for more reasons. This is just an example. He says nothing and completely ignores the text message. This morning, he goes to work as planned. My 16-year-old daughter is caring for me during the day. She feeds me well. He comes home at 6 p.m. Still no apology. He makes the chicken dinner tonight. He defrosted it last night. Brings it to me and then he leaves silently. He parks himself in front of the TV. I eat and finish, but I cannot take care of the dirty plate, so it's sitting beside me on the bed. Ten minutes after I eat, I use crutches to hobble to get my own medication, and he ignored me while I struggled to get a glass of ice water and take the meds. It's an obvious struggle and he's choosing to ignore me. 
I managed to take the meds and as I walked by him to go to bed, he says nothing. He just now crawled into bed and is near asleep. He hasn't said anything to me yet. No, how are you? No apology, no consideration. Silence. Does he owe me an apology or am I the jerk? Edit for clarification. I'm not sitting around in bed, I'm walking as much as possible, following doctor and PT directions. It's my second hip replacement, first one was in 2018, early onset osteoarthritis. I can't cook yet though, and he said he would. I can't really blame OP, they're in pain, and they feel like their level of care for what they should be getting is clearly not there. He could obviously be putting in so much more effort in trying to make things a little bit better for OP rather than just feeding them the bare minimum or scraps or whatever they can just scrounge up. OP even clarified in the comments that they had ordered HelloFresh meals ahead of time to make it easier to do, you know, a bit better with meal planning, and it's still just the bare minimum. That said, it feels like there's more greater issues than even just the level of care that's being expressed here. This next story is, would I be the jerk if I cancel my cousin's plane ticket and ruin his friend's vacation? I, 23-year-old female, am very close with my cousin, 20-year-old male. We were raised together, so we're pretty much like siblings. When I turned 18, I moved away from home, and so we rarely see each other anymore. During a FaceTime last week, I proposed the idea that he flies out to my home to stay for a long weekend and we can catch up. I bought the plane ticket in full myself, but he does plan to pay for half of it. I already have the time off work approved for when he gets here, and I've been planning fun activities for us to do when he arrives. Here's where I may be the jerk. I live in a very popular vacation spot. Yesterday he asked me if one of his friends could join him for the trip to my home and that he already invited her. I told him I haven't seen him in over two years and wanted to spend this limited time with him. I also expressed that I'm not comfortable housing a stranger in my small home. I've only got two bedrooms. After I explained this to him, he left me on red all day. He just texted me back saying that his friend's mom went ahead and bought her a plane ticket here anyways, and they're both fully expecting me to pick her up and house her for the duration of the trip. I told my cousin that his friend needs to look into securing sleeping and transportation accommodations or get a plane ticket refund, as I will not be providing her a place to stay or transportation around to do activities. He is very upset with me that I would ruin his friend's surprise vacation by not allowing her free accommodation in my home. I feel as though they lied to the friend's mother about the circumstances because there's no way her mom surprised her with only a ticket for the exact days I planned for my cousin to stay here. Or why would they tell the mother that their daughter would have a place to go to after I explicitly said no? Would I be the jerk if I cancel his plane ticket? I feel bad just because I feel like I'm witnessing OP's relationship with their cousin blowing up here. I don't think OP's going to be the jerk here because they just completely hijacked the whole plans that OP had, especially considering they're expecting to stay in OP's place. Don't think it's going to necessarily end very amicably though. Our next story is, am I the jerk for refusing to pay for my sister's wedding dress when she insulted my career? I, 28-year-old female, am a self-taught graphic designer and have worked hard to build my career. My sister, 25-year-old female, on the other hand, has always been critical of my job, calling it a hobby and not a real job. Our parents passed away a few years ago, and I've been more of a parental figure to her since then. We've had our ups and downs, but I've always tried to support her. Recently, she got engaged and was over the moon about planning her wedding. She found her dream dress, but it was way out of her budget. Knowing I've saved a bit, she asked if I could pay for it as her wedding gift. I agreed because I wanted her to be happy. However, a few days ago, we had a family gathering where she introduced her fiancé to our extended family. During the dinner, she made a snide remark about my career, implying that I was still playing with my computer while others had real jobs. I was hurt and confronted her later. Things escalated and I told her if she didn't respect my career, she shouldn't expect me to fund her wedding dress with the money I earned from it. She accused me of ruining her wedding and being petty. I'm torn. I want to support her, but I also feel disrespected. Am I the jerk? I feel like this is a really easy decision to say OP's not the jerk. Paying for somebody's wedding dress is something that you usually would reserve for somebody that treats you with respect. It really is laughable to entertain the idea of paying for this wedding dress when they're so critical and disrespectful of what would fund that wedding dress. This next story is, am I the jerk for telling my mom she should hold her husband to the same standard she holds me to? My dad died a few days after my 7th birthday. 
He was on his way to work and got into an accident. I loved my dad and have missed him so much since he died. Mom and I both went into grief therapy after his death. She went for about six months, I went for almost three years. A few months before I stopped attending therapy, my mom met Mark. I didn't meet him for like a year and a bit after, but mom told me she was dating someone and then when they became boyfriend and girlfriend. They got married like seven months after I met him, I was 12. Even before they got married, Mark and my mom would call me their daughter and say I was their kid. He would tell people I was his daughter when he met them, whereas I always called him my mom's husband or fiancé before they got married. It bothers my mom and Mark that I don't tell people he's my dad or say, my parents, when I'm talking about both. Over the years, they've told me it would mean a lot to Mark if I were to introduce him as my dad, or she said I could say bonus dad, but not stepdad since that sounds far more insignificant in terms of the role he plays in my life. I have never done this, but for a couple of years now, my mom has told me I should be better than this. I should think about someone else's feelings above my own, that it would cost me nothing to let people see him as my parent instead of instantly delegating him to just the dude she's married to. She has gone on and on about thinking about his feelings and not putting my own first the whole time. Lately, it's been getting to me, so when mom said it to me, 17-year-old female, a couple of weeks ago, I told her she should try holding her husband to the same standard she holds me to and ask him to put my feelings on this before his own. My mom told me he already has to do that day after day when I refuse to acknowledge him as a dad in my life. I told her he had a choice on whether he wanted to marry her and take me on. I never got a choice in his place in my life, but I told her I am taking back that right to choose what he is to me, whether she likes it or not. She told me it was petty for me to claim he needs to be held to the same standard when his actions don't hurt me but mine hurt him. Am I the jerk? I've just always felt the one sure way to make sure a kid never latches on to a step-parent is trying to force them into that role. I think OP has every right to choose if he is or is not recognized as more than just stepdad in their lives. I think it's pretty clear cut, even if they made huge sacrifices and did a lot to help OP. Our next story is, am I the jerk for double checking with my husband that he was aware of the price of the gifts he was about to give away? I have a load of collectibles, mostly Lego and Pokemon merch. Some of my minifigures are worth over $100 each, and my Pokemon card collection is probably worth in excess of $8,000. I also have sealed packs of cards. I have a bunch of Magic the Gathering cards as well, but they're not a primary focus. My husband has been putting off doing his Christmas shopping for his work. They donate to children in need. He asked if he could just donate some of my Lego or Pokemon stuff. I asked him for an example. He pulled out a few things randomly. He picked up my TIE Fighter pilot's helmet. I told him to check eBay to see how much it would cost to replace. It was about $300. He also picked out some sealed packages of Pokemon cards. Again, I told him to look up what it would cost to replace. He gave up. He said it was dumb that I kept thousands of dollars of my hobby stuff somewhere. It could get damaged or stolen. I was so tempted to ask how much it cost to replace his clubs after our garage was burgled. I know what my stuff is worth, I know what I own and I keep it safe. I'm not really sure why my husband has such a big problem with it. I was just making sure he knew that I would expect him to replace it if he took it without my permission. I definitely would want it replaced. I don't think OP's the jerk or out of line here. I mean, I completely understand there might be some people who don't like clutter or having a collection of stuff. But really, I feel like if that was enough of an issue, it shouldn't have gotten to this point where you're married and living together and having some kind of blow up over this, especially when the things you're collecting actually have real good value. Our next story is, am I the jerk for not making my child move to accommodate someone with a possible disability? My husband and I were flying yesterday with our one-year-old. He's very active, so we always buy him his own seat rather than putting him on our laps for the flight. We had bulkhead seats, those at the front of the cabin with extra leg room. When we boarded, the flight attendants told us to belt baby to one of us parents for takeoff and landing, and that once the seatbelt signs were off, we could settle him into his own seat. That was all fine. I put him in my lap and belted him to me while I was waiting for other passengers to board. As the last people were boarding, another flight attendant came toward us with a tall guy using a cane. She pointed at the empty seat between me and my husband and asked the dude if that would be okay. Husband said, Excuse me, what do you mean? The flight attendant said, This gentleman is in some pain and needs space to stretch his legs. The only bulkhead seat we have open is between the two of you. If you'd like to move next to each other, I'm sure the gentleman wouldn't mind sitting in the aisle or window. 
I said, that's not an open seat, that's the baby seat. She said, Madam, children under two aren't allocated seats. Please let the gentleman sit down. We had blankets and a couple of kiddos' toys on the middle seat. Husband taking out passports and boarding cards to show her said, Yes, we know you don't give infants seats, which is why I paid for it. My son is sitting here. I'm not holding him for a 10-hour flight at night. We planned ahead and I'm sorry, but this man can't sit here. Flight attendant went and got the head flight attendant who agreed with us, and they carried on to find the dude an open aisle seat. Flight took off 15 minutes later, so I'm assuming it got all sorted. But when we told husband's family after the flight, his parents started going on about how that's what's wrong with this generation. Apparently, we don't consider others enough. I mean, would it have been nice if OP and their partner did let the guy sit there? Sure, that would have been a great, very kind thing to do. But did they pay for that seat, expecting to have that seat, and expecting to use that seat? And do they have every right to use that seat? Absolutely. Do they really deserve to feel like the jerks for that? I don't think so. Also, Lord knows I'm willing to bet those parents that said that's wrong with this generation, if they were in that situation, they probably would never give up that seat either. This next story is, am I the jerk for telling a niece I'm not obliged to find her a job because she's allergic to dogs? I, 29-year-old female, live with my husband and our two dogs, a 20-minute drive from my childhood home. My parents are there with my two nieces, Sally and Emma, both 16. Sally is my brother's who passed away along with his wife two years ago and my parents are now her guardian. Emma is my sister's who's currently working overseas for a few years. She went to stay with my parents about the same time Sally did and her mom is due back in the middle of 2024. Emma's father has never been in her life. My husband's family lives a few hours away and we always spend the December holiday with them while my parents get Thanksgiving. Ever since the girls moved in with my parents, I offered them the chance to pet sit my dogs for my husband and me. They would need to take them on walks and feed them and all that. We offered a rather generous pay for the job. Sally is allergic to dogs while Emma is not. Emma took the job and did well and has been our December pet sitter for a couple years now, as well as the occasional shorter term sitter other parts of the year. Last week I went to visit my parents and to ask Emma if she'll take pet sitting again, which she happily said yes. I noticed that Sally was a bit sulky and asked her what was wrong. Sally said that Emma was lucky to be working for me at such a great pay and that she's guaranteed a job every December, while Sally has to work minimum wage with the occasional babysitting jobs. Sally said I should get her a job too, to be fair. I told her I don't create jobs just to hire people for them. The jobs were just there needing to be done. And it's unfortunate, but not my fault that she's not qualified for a job I'm in need of. Sally said an allergy is not something she can control, and Emma shouldn't get to reap the benefits and it's not fair. I told her sometimes life isn't fair, and suggest she finds what she can do and make the most out of it. My mom later called me and said I was being insensitive, and maybe I could have Sally help file my documents or something. I told her I would be wasting money and time having Sally do something that doesn't need to be done. My mom said my husband and I are well off enough. We can spare a few hundred bucks this holiday to save Sally's feelings. I don't believe in coddling and I think Sally needs to learn things can't always go her way. Am I the jerk? Opie's definitely not the jerk. They're paying well for an actual service. I think it would be a horrible thing for Sally's mentality and growth as a person to reward them and give them this money for doing next to nothing. That would be a horrendous idea to reinforce that complaining and those expectations she has. This next story is, am I the jerk for banning my teenage nephew from my house and keeping my family away from him on Christmas? On Thanksgiving, my daughter lost her AirPods. We did the find my AirPods and they were at my sister's house in my nephew's Adam 13 bedroom. He claims it was a mistake and he thought they were his, but when we got them back the AirPods were still in the pink donut carrying clip that my daughter uses. Adam has had a lot of mistakes over the years from taking gaming controllers, AirPods, toys that he randomly finds. This has been an ongoing issue and I think at 13 it's time for Adam to stop having these mistakes. I told my sister Adam isn't welcomed at my home for Christmas because he's had mistakes there and has stolen other people's things. I don't think I'm being mean, but I'm sick of the little thief who has no consequences and I don't want him in my home anymore. Because of this, my mom is now hosting Christmas because I don't want to. I made it clear to my family why. I think it's past the time we address Adam's issue. My mother and sister think I'm going about this the wrong way and I'm being way too mean on Adam over a little mistake, but I'm honestly just sick of being around him. 
I had to tell my kids not to take any expensive or new gifts they liked to grandmas. I've also told them no sharing with Adam and any gifts we unwrap at grandmas goes straight to the car and locked in. The situation upsets me because I now feel like I have to punish my kids for Adam's behavior and they can't play with their own things on Christmas and be vigilant because their cousin steals and no one but me seems to give two craps about how wrong that is. OP's definitely not the jerk and I despise how the family is trying to cover this all up and look past it by saying, oh Adam just makes a number of mistakes over the years. It's horrendous that they're not addressing this behavior. This next story is, am I the jerk for agreeing with my brother that his son does not have to treat me with the respect due an elder? I, 28, am a lot younger than my siblings. My youngest brother is 40. He has a 16 year old son that he has pretty much ignored his whole life. He divorced his ex and quit his job to go see the world when my nephew was 4 and I was 16. His ex stayed in our lives and we've all helped out where we can. My brother is currently in town for a while. We decided to do an early Christmas so he could be a part of it, except he's been acting like a jerk. In my culture, it's common to refer to your elders as sir or ma'am. My brother heard my nephew refer to me as sir and brayed out that he doesn't need to treat me with respect. I'm barely old enough to dress myself, blah blah. I told him to shut the freak up and not insert himself into conversations that don't concern him. He said that if his son is in it, then it concerns him. He kept at it all afternoon. Everyone told him to knock it off, but he wouldn't. After dinner, my nephew started calling me by my name. I told him that we're in public and I expect him to treat me with respect. He said that his father says he doesn't have to, so I asked him if that was who we listened to now. He said yes. I agreed with him that he doesn't have to treat me as an elder. When it came time to open gifts, I left what I'd bought my nephew in my car. We all exchanged gifts and it was a good evening. My nephew was kind of disappointed that he didn't get any big gifts this year. My brother was at my house yesterday and noticed that I had a new toy. I decided to keep the handheld computer I'd gotten my nephew for myself. It's pretty cool. It's a full Windows computer but the size of a Nintendo Switch. My brother asked why I got a toy when I have all the consoles and a gaming computer. I was honest and told him it was originally for his kid but since I'm not to be respected as an elder, I have zero reason to waste money on him. My brother says I'm being a jerk and try to get my family involved. They all rejected him. He tried to get my nephew to guilt me into it. I asked my nephew what his father got him as a gift. I said that since he wants to respect his father and not me, he can get his gifts and such from his father. I mean at 16 they should know better but I mean they're kind of getting ripped between two sides here. I don't know if I would go as hard as OP is going but I don't blame OP and I don't think they're the jerk. I mean if the kid wants the father in his life, it's not surprising that they're going to act however their father's asking them to. You know, they don't want to get abandoned again. Our next story is, am I the jerk for refusing to give up my extra seat for someone else's toddler on a flight that I paid for because I'm fat? I, 34 year old female, am obese. I'm actively working toward losing weight and I've made progress, but I'm still obese as I'm typing this. I'm going over to see my brother and his husband for Christmas across the country and because I'm fat, I booked an extra seat so everyone can be more comfortable. I know it sucks having to pay for an extra seat, but it is what it is. I know Southwest Airlines has this customer of size policy, but I've had some bad experiences with Southwest even before I was obese, so I wasn't doing that and it's mostly my fault I even got fat. Everything goes smoothly from checking in to security and boarding, at least at first. This woman comes to my row with a boy who appeared to be about a year old. She told me to squeeze into one seat so her son could sit in the other. She told me, not asked. I told her no and that I paid for the seat for the extra space. She makes a big fuss over it which got the flight attendant's attention. She told the flight attendant I was stealing the seat from her son. Then I showed my boarding passes proving that I in fact paid for the extra seat. The flight attendant asked me if I could try to squeeze in but I said no, that I wanted the extra seat I paid for. The boy, who the mom said is 18 months old, was supposed to sit in her lap so he could do just that. The flight attendant eventually told the mom to put her son in her lap. I got dirty looks and passive aggressive remarks from her for the entire flight and I do feel a little bad because the boy looked hard to control, so am I the jerk? Similar to the earlier story here, OP went out of their way to buy this extra seat so that their experience would be good and the mother's lack of planning or consideration for whether or not they want to buy two seats for them and their kid 
doesn't constitute OP giving up their extra seat that they paid for. Our next story is, am I the jerk for refusing to attend my in-laws Christmas unless sister-in-law removes the stocking that has a different name than the one I chose for my unborn son? To preface, I, female, have been with my husband Todd for three years. He has a son, nine, from his late wife. Todd is pretty close to his sister Monica. Their mom's deceased and Monica has basically taken over. She's nice to me and all, but she seems to be a bit controlling, especially when it comes to Todd, but that wasn't a real issue until after I got pregnant. After we found the gender of the baby, boy, she insisted on the name Tommy, but I refused because I had already had a name in mind and Todd loves it, but he chose to stay out of the fight saying, maybe we should just let Monica call him Tommy. I refused and asked her to please respect me and the fact that I'm the mom, not her, and she said okay. Like always, she's hosting Christmas for the family this year and invited me and Todd to Christmas dinner. I was intending on coming, that is, until I discovered that she'd hung stockings with her kids, nephews, nieces' names, and hung a Tommy stocking, saying that it's for my son. I was livid. I lost it on her and there was a huge fight. I told her I won't be coming to her Christmas dinner if she doesn't remove the stocking or put the real name and then I left. Todd started yelling at me when we got home, saying that I was attempting to ruin an important family tradition by refusing to come, and said that I was overreacting and cannot be telling his sister what she should or shouldn't do in her own home. He tried to convince me to come, but I said no. Not until she removes that stocking, and it doesn't look like she's going to do it, because he spoke with her and now he's mad at me for making a huge deal out of it. Her husband Philip, who's usually nice to me, called yesterday, saying that he spoke with Todd and he'd be devastated if I cause the family to miss the event at Monica's house, and ruin it not only for the adults but for the kids as well, since my stepson loves spending the holidays with his cousins. Todd has been quiet, and the only way we communicate is through Philip. I feel ashamed. Maybe I overreacted. Am I the jerk? Opie's clearly not the jerk here, I'm very confused in why their husband is acting the way he is, and it's really rich that they would say, you can't tell my sister what she should or shouldn't do in her own home, as if what she does or doesn't do in her own home cannot allow OP to make up their mind on whether or not they do or do not come. OP absolutely can make that choice based on what's going on. That said, that's all the time we have for today. Now if you want to hear another crazy am I the jerk here story, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.